Hello and welcome back to another Demis Helen tutorial as a Christmas bonus special for Saturday. I know it's not quite Christmas yet. We are going to break down this pad sequence that I introduced in the first video. If you haven't seen that, that is on screen now. Uh, the preset's called Come With Me and it is within Rapid. So let's just take a look at how I did this. So first things first, there are three layers and we have the roads and generic one uh, wavetable and then we have the analog source. Now there's various bits of modulation, we've got some morphing going on there, we've got the organic drift feature on there to give it a more of an analog presence. Again, same here with this one, um, but we've introduced a little bit of morphing at a higher speed using an LFO. So these things are all just being modulated by LFOs. And then how the sound gets its character, which is this part. is all to do with the modulation from the sequence. So if we take a look, for some reason I use D on this one, I automated the filter volume. So if I use the external uh, controller here to simulate this, if we go to here, fill that out, and we'll just copy, in fact, we'll copy the main sequence over so you've got some context of what is actually happening. Okay, so that is how the sound started. And then I was just modulating this filter here. You can see I'm just modulating the filter that I've obviously set up with the macros. And I thought it sounded really good. And how about that was introduced very slowly as the filter closed. So the higher the peak on here is kind of maximum volume. So if I took this all the way to the top, this cutoff, depending on where I've set this sequencer to work to, would get to the maximum volume it was set. So this is set here, as you can see, to maximum. And then when it comes down, uh, you can see this is being influenced here by bringing in the filter. And you can see it's following that pattern. It's going to go down, up, down constantly and that's what gives that sense of depth in the sound again and you can hear it starting to do its magic once it gets to about here And you can see what it's doing is filtering in, filtering back out. And I've made each one a little bit different so it sounds more organic, more human. And straight away, that is just giving a ton of texture to the sound. It's the same sound, but it's filtering in and out, in and out, in and out, in the same pattern. And we're using the LP Pro 24 here, so we get tons of depth because it's a steeper shelf. Uh, steeper slope, sorry, and we've got this amplify feature. So if we just used a regular uh, low pass at the same, so 24 decibels per octave, we don't get that same power and that same gritty texture, uh, whereas this has a nice uh, sort of analog vintage amplification to it. So it's all about the modulation, it's all about that. Take that away, the sound is just this. And on the second layer, Sparkle, we have this layer here, which has got some modulation again on the filter. Let's just have a quick listen to this on its own. So we've got a bell sound as well as a PWM, uh, I think it's called Unspecified, and a bit of modulation going on again there, so a bit of left and right balance, a little bit of noise being added to this bell sound uh, using the noise generator effects. And then we're using the bend, like the asymmetric clip amplifier on here just to obviously give a bit more presence to the sound um, and send it into the distance as well as all this reverb down here. And you can see this is up and down, up and down constantly. And I think what we are using is we're using this here. You can see it's set to the same tempo, so it's kind of bringing that in and out. If we took that away. adds another extra dimension of texture to the sound. It's all about the little things 
and these presets look like they're really really complex to build and things it's all down to creativity and understanding what your sound needs to sound like so when I heard this it's too smooth straight away I just thought well this comes preset like this let's assign it and there you are that is exactly what happens we assign the cutoff here to the envelope and we've got our choppiness straight away we could apply the glitch which we have but we've attached this to the talker the from and the crush feature there and then there's various other bits of modulation here with the reverb but this is all linked to the macros and that is it if you took away this sort of uh, sound if we filter this in that's creating our sound there and then this is creating our texture so it's still playing the same thing, but we've got a lot of noise coming out of this and a bit of talking because of that. And it, it sounds a little bit mysterious. And that is the reason why I went for that. I just chose this bell sound really just to start it off. And then I wanted to mash it up basically. And that's what we did. So it sounds like it's doing a lot more and that's down to the delay. If we turn that off. It's exactly the same sequence obviously as the original melody and if we look at the ARP it's the same sequence as layer 1 it's playing the same sequence but the only difference is the delay gives you that impression that there's a lot more going on Okay, so to just go over how I developed the preset, let's just go through a few simple things. So everything is being modulated at the moment and we're just going to change a few layers. So you can see we've got this pattern here and how do we assign sequence events? So if we wanted to add something new into here, let's say we wanted to add some band, let's say some band passing or notch. Let's do some notch on here. Let's have that there. Let's do band passing maybe. Yeah, something a little bit more obvious. Say we wanted to modulate that. Uh, I've been asked a few questions on how do you start like attach the sequencer to it. So we've got sequencer D already set to go to this filter and we want a bit of a different pattern say. So I am going to reset this and Sequence A, just click on the root button and just drag it onto there and then use this little red corner uh, symbol to drag the range of this, whether you want it to go down or up. So let's just say we want it to go to about 11 o'clock and then return to the position of this knob. And we get this, which is nothing. Because each is picking random points. So we can choose this to be mono arp and it will play through as expected. You can set this to BPM, you can set this to re-trigger on each note, or as a one-shot. So mono arp is what we're going to use, and we can start modulating. So right-click for this side, left-click for that side. So I'm just going to do two patterns that are roughly the same. This one's going to start a bit earlier instead. And we'll make that go a little bit higher. But fall a bit quicker. So now you can see that's modulating that. And this gives you a good indicator of time on your uh, track. So you can see in your head where you want it to kind of go up. And if you're struggling to see that, just attach this to an automation knob or just automate it with your mouse and just hear what you want to hear. So again, there's no limit to this. We could take this same automation to the resonance and go the other way and add more. And simply to remove this, just right click, reset modulation. 
let's just reset the sequence. And say we wanted D to control the resonance. So it's working a bit different. It's not doing anything most of the time until this is active here. But you've controlled it using a different sequence. And that's the same for everything. So say we wanted this to control another parameter down here in the effects, we can add the effects and say let's add the glitch. And the glitch is set to zero mix. And uh, we just want to automate that mix knob. And we can use root A, just drag and drop. Do have the alternative of obviously going down here and clicking sequence A, choosing glitch mix on the target. And that's the same way as doing it, but click and drag, much, much easier. And you can see that is now automating the glitch mix. So let's have a listen to that as well. So you can do anything. It's pretty much unlimited. You could add a transgate in there, and let's say it's set up to 32. And set it to... Okay, so we're keeping pace with the track timing. And again, we could have... Also, we could have this B sequencer here. Kind of rising like that. Set it to mono arp. So the moment's not controlling anything, and if we drag and drop that to mix. Drag that to full. And that's how simple it is to root things. So it's not as difficult as you see. You see a lot of stuff going on, and it can put you off a bit. Um, say we wanted to modulate the phase down here, uh, we could pick uh, LFO D and we can attach that to the phase again by doing the same thing, dragging the plus sign down to here and you can see it's modulating the phase at the bottom based on this pattern. So up it goes and back down and then nothing because obviously um, this is working as a bi-directional thing and this is just one direction thing. So let's have something a little bit different on the LFO. Let's pick, um, I don't know, liquid wobble. So it's a lot faster and you can see that's modulating the phase now. So let's just listen to how that sounds. And let's just turn the level down to eliminate the uh, LFO. So there's a little bit of phasing going on. And let's make that a bit more obvious. We'll attach it to the balance so it's going back and forth on the left and right panning. Let's introduce it again. And we can reduce that just by decreasing the range. And there we are. So routing things on Rapid is really not that difficult. Everything is pretty simple. And to use the macros up here, again, you get the plus sign next to each one. So this controls sidechain and reverb. But if we wanted to uh, increase the dual delay, which we're already doing with this, we could just use that and attach that. Or say we want, let's put something else and that's obvious, the talker. And say we want the talker to be introduced to that point, but when it's turned down, it's not there. Very, very simple stuff. So I hope that opened uh, a few doors and avenues for you to do some preset design. Uh, probably one of the best to do this on. It's very clear and simple. Work at one layer at a time. Once you've got the sound you want, if you feel like you could thicken it up a little bit, then go to layer two and just start adding some sounds in. Pick some multi samples, pick some wavetables, and have a mess around with some of the uh, features that you get, like the effects types. Just go in and say, oh, I want to hear what double A does, and just have a mess around. And at some point, you're going to hit a peak where you hear that sounds really good with that preset that I'm designing already. 
and in it goes. And then you can start, obviously, moving on to modulating it and doing what you want to it and stuff like that, attaching it to the macros. And it's really that simple to build. You don't have to use all eight layers. Uh, people are saying, do you have to? No, you don't. Do you have to use all three oscillators in the first? No, you don't. You can just use one if you want. It really doesn't matter. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope this opened the doors, like I said, to a bit more creation. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments down below. Hit the like button and finally subscribe if you haven't already. Three videos a week and there's a few more leading up to Christmas. So thank you very much and I will see you next video.